Thank you so much for joining us for yet another uh, week of our epic coaching calls. Um, we're doing these live now, which I'm really excited about. We do this every Thursday. It's 10.30 a.m. Pacific or 1.30 p.m. Eastern. If you can join us live, um, that's always great because you get to engage and ask questions and, and really be a part of the show. If you can't, it's no big deal. Uh, we record these. We put them up on YouTube, and we also host them on um, uh, the, the Nino members area. Uh, joining me as always is our illustrious community manager, Deneen Goncalves. Deneen, thanks for being here. Yeah. And uh, we have our very first. Is this our first? Second. This is our second, and we have our second. I'm not trying to glaze over the first one. Sorry. We have our second, but it's our first um, member interview. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have a very first member interview uh, here with us from Acton Academy. This is Dave Kirby. Dave, thanks for being here. Really appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, and we're excited to talk to you. So I'm maybe going to step into the background a little bit because, Danina, I think you're going to be better positioned to uh, start lobbing up some questions for David just to get his senses to you know, let's go all the way back, how we started in Montessori, what the, what the, the whole, the whole view was, and I'm telling you how to do your job and you already know, sorry. <laughs> no, it's all good. Um, Dave, we're so excited to have you. And I know, um, you know, there are curious members out there that want to know your story and kind of, um, you know, hear from you and tips and all that good stuff. So can we start just by, you know, getting a quick bio, you know, what's your background? How did you find Montessori and what really pulled you into Montessori and eventually leading you to opening a school? So um, first and foremost, my wife and I are parents. Uh, this journey started when we had our daughter, uh, Madeline, who, as I said, she just turned five uh, this past weekend. Um, I went to a Montessori school as a child. My wife went to an alternative school. Uh, we're here in Washington, D.C., and as nervous parents, she was like pregnant, and we're looking at schools that's everywhere has got a wait list, and we just didn't see mm -hmm. the kind of joy that we remember from our own childhood and the schools that we had visited before we even gave birth to Metal. So um, we heard about Acton Academy, which is a sort of Montessori-based school um, in elementary, middle, and high school. It kind of takes Montessori into the 21st century. And I knew the founder through work. I was a think tanker. And he said, hey, if you'd be interested in starting an act in your own community, come and check it out. And so um, eight months pregnant, we said, well, maybe we could do this. We submitted an application. He says, congratulations, you're the owner of an acting academy in Washington, DC. Come on down to see whether you want to like do this. And Madeline is born. So <laughs> six weeks old, we take the first plane flight, Madeline's life, down to Austin, Texas to check out the original Acton Academy. We spent the entire week there and we were completely blown away by what we saw. It was the joy we saw as a parents, like with our first daughter, it was the joy we remembered when we were in Montessori schools. And we said, this is it. Either we're moving to Austin, Texas, to start our child on the wait list at Acton Academy, or we're gonna to try to open one in DC. And it took us five years, five years to do it in DC. So this has definitely been a journey. And my, um, uh, we are not Montessori experts. We've never been principals or heads of school. We're first and foremost parents. So I, I just make that caveat that we're, we're approaching this with fresh eyes and uh, happy to share the, the challenges along the way. Right, right. That's so interesting. I love to hear, um, you know, parents that notice and experience that joy um, and purpose, because I think that's what Montessori offers so well um, in comparison to other programs. So can you tell me a little bit about your journey starting from, you know, opening Acton and then, well, at least signing on to Acton and then opening yeah. it, which was this last school year or this school year, right? You opened yeah, brand new. We opened in fall. Yeah. Um, so in Washington, D.C., like a lot of urban environments, finding the right space and putting together the project is this huge enterprise. And so um, it all came together kind of late. And the most important thing that came together late was actual students who signed up to be at our school. <laughs> so <laughs> as a startup, you're like, we're going to build this. Parents are going to love it. We're just full of enthusiasm and heart and hustle. And four weeks before we opened, we had two students. <laughs> two students. Actually, I take it back. We had three students six weeks before we opened and one dropped out. Oh no. 
So we're like, we're going in the other direction. And it was around this time we hired Nito to help us because we were like literally not sleeping at night. Are we going to open or not? Like, what are we doing wrong here? Like, we have a program, we have a wonderful team. Like, how can we sell this thing? And the weeks are ticking. So um, I can't tell you how valuable Nito is. We can dig into all of how you guys helped us, but we made it in the four weeks before we opened. We, we sold seven more families. We started with nine. We now have 15 families who are starting in March. So we just are starting our wait list for the fall because we have 28 families who've committed for the fall. Just on Friday, we had our architects back over and we're opening a second studio. We're looking at the new space so we can keep going um, because we have so much demand. We'll probably be at 36 in the fall. So we will have gone from nine to 36 or about 4X growth in our first year. And it was really kind of getting thoughtful about marketing and sales that got us there and taking us from naive parents who just want to do something great for our child to semi-sophisticated Montessorians who can build a program that um, is worth it for families. Right. Wow, what a journey <laughs> in such a short amount of time. Um, do you mind me asking how you found Nito? How did you come across us? Google search. <laughs> what else? <laughs> right? <laughs> and, but the thing that sold us is your copy. Like Nito just put on paper some of the struggles that we were facing. Your blog posts, the knowledge, the community, the tips, the all of that. We read everything. We're just those kind of people. Um, you know, I was a think tank scholar before. I'm used to like digging into deep papers, like um, with lots of footnotes and exhibits, and like I want everything you can give me before I make a decision. Hmm. And so we read every single thing we could that you know put out, and we're like, these guys know what they're doing. I can tell because it's deep. It's like several layers deep. Um, so that's that's kind of how we did it, and then when we, when we talked to you guys, I think it just proved that you also had the same heart and hustle that we did, just as a startup. Um, and we're like, you know what? Some people who know what we're going through who can help us. That's exactly what's going to be helpful. Yeah, that's great feedback. Um, when you so before you kind of dove into the whole marketing world of a Montessori school, did you have some marketing background before doing that? Uh, I did, and <clears throat> I think this um, is maybe filed under the hard lesson learned. Um, my wife and I both had backgrounds in marketing for large established organizations, hmm. think tanks that have been around for 40 years, you know, Washington, D.C. institutions. Um, so the way we interacted with marketing was like more abstract. Like we knew how to look at data. We knew how to... Um, target, we knew how to write copy. What was surprising is that that's not what this is about. This is about face-to-face -face sales. And like marketing is different than sales. Like I can get people here, but I have to look them in the eye <laughs> and tell my story and convince them to part with $25,000 a year <laughs> for their child to do something great with um, in Montessori. And like that was the chasm for us to cross because we had plenty of marketing experience. We ran an event. We, our, our email list is 1,800 because we wow. built an email, email list from a program we do called the Action Children's Business Fair. But sales was the thing that was surprising for us that, yes, marketing excellence is one thing, but selling is actually a little different, and you have to be excellent at both. Do you have any tips um, for the sales process? And I asked this question that, because I think this is really uncomfortable for many Montessorians, right? We, yeah. we love to have conversations about what our programs offer and what we see, but when it comes down to, hey, we're, our tuition is $25,000 a year, um, and it turns into a sales conversation, do you have any tips for Montessorians that maybe don't find that to be such a comfortable process? Um, well, first, let me validate that feeling. Like, we felt the same way. Who are we? We're parents. We don't even know what we're doing. Like sales is icky. Like I'm not even confident my program for $25,000 is going to be great. Like I, I am, but I have a little deep insecurity about that. And I'm trying, you know, so 
um, let me just validate that. That was certainly our experience. Um, there was a wonderful um, book that I read and some advice that I got. And uh, uh, a friend from the Acton Network, who I called in panic because we weren't having much success, said, um, listen, selling is no more than just telling your story and all the love and passion that made you take the first step. Mm -hmm. Tell that story every single time. Mm -hmm. And people might not even remember the story, but they'll remember how you feel, how they felt about that story. And they can relate to you as a parent. So tell that mm -hmm. story. Selling is about telling stories. And then people will open up and tell you their story, about what they want for the child and their hopes and dreams. And so um, we kind of took a step back and said, ooh, it's not about selling all the little features of Montessori and let me show you the material that's going to be like blow your mind. It's no, we're parents. We're on a journey. We want this for our own child. Our daughter's in the program. Let me tell you who we are and like why this matters to us. And that changed our success like overnight. I mean, it was hard. You have to practice your story. You have to get it right. You have to repeat it over and over and over, which feels uncomfortable <laughs> every mm. time. But that was, I think, the number one tip. Um, there's a terrific book called The Cell is Human by Daniel Pink. And I think it's like chapter seven of that book is about the Pixar framework for selling. Mm. And the idea is Pixar, they're like storytellers. They have a framework for every Pixar story. You know, once upon a time, there was fill in the blank. And then um, every day it was the same thing. And this is what it was. Then one day something happened. Because of that, this happened. And because of that, this happened. And then at the end, we emerged changed somehow. And that pattern, it's like a narrative of your, your journey is what resonates with human beings. We're storytelling creatures. So like, tell your story, follow the Pixar framework. Don't leave out the details. Like you're a, you're a human. So um, that was my one lesson learned. And that's been the most effective thing, hands down, for Nicole and I. I just bought that on Kindle while we're talking. Oh, um, wonderful. Yeah. So David, what I hear you saying is, you know, the story in helping somebody connect with you, um, you know, helps, helps them know that you're a real person, right? And so as parents, we're always looking for somebody, um, you know, trustworthy to take care of our children. So if, if it's fair for me to summarize it like this, where rather than selling your program, sell your story, um, and, and then you can bring them in and show them what the, how the program matches their story. Totally. Totally. Um, am I summing that up correctly? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. They want to know who you are. They want to know you can deliver. Yeah. You, believe oh, in it. you believe in it so passionately that you're going to put your own child in the program. Like, that's a huge signal. And then, great, I can tell you all about the wonderful things about Montessori, but that's sort of icing on the cake. That's the features, not the benefits. The benefits is like, hey, we're on a journey to do something great for our children and your children, too. Um, hmm. You know, I always say parenting partner, right? We're really parenting partners for these families and we want to be, you know, there to help them because this parenting journey is not easy. You know, we're going to have challenges and struggles and you're probably going to cry as a parent because it's, it's not easy to do this. Um, so to have a program, to have a school, kind of a home away from home, know the people, feel connected. Um, you can't, yeah, you can't really compare, you know, Montessori is so good at that. So I, um, yeah, I agree. happy that you're sharing that part of your story and you yeah. experienced that. See, Cosm, do you got any like direct, I mean, you know, digital marketing is kind of your, your realm. Um, so I'm wondering if you've got some specific <laughs> questions for David when you think about, you know, a new program in a fairly competitive space in DC. Really um, mm. Yeah. So do you have any questions you want to ask him that can kind of support our member base, you know, for digital marketing? Before I ask a question, I actually just want to make a statement. Um, one thing that, I, David, I think you and your wife did just so well is um, really follow the instructions we gave, A, which I appreciated, but then B, you took it many steps further. And so just a few examples, like we have an automated email nurture that we ask our members to use. And if somebody opts into your list, they receive these, I think it's seven, these seven emails. 
well, you took the emails and, and completely made them your own. So it wasn't just a copy paste environment. You, you rewrote them. And, and I think you actually added some to the series and you, you sort of changed the direction they were going into. Uh, and I was just so impressed with how you, you know, you took what we provided as a guide and, and just made it better. Can you talk a little bit about your propensity to do that and where that comes from? Um, thank you for, uh, for saying that, uh, Kasim. at least for us, we are approaching all of this from a, with fresh eyes. And the thing that, um, because we're beginners, we've never done this before, right? And so the thing that was most helpful for Nito was giving us world-class examples to start from. I don't know what a Montessori welcome series from emails looks like, but Kasim just gave me a pretty good one. But the thing that struck it for us was, it sounds like Kasim, or maybe it's Matt. I don't know who wrote it. it that was Matt. It doesn't sound like us. Right. But that's okay. This email series has seven. There's these things in it. I might, and so I think Nicole and I are professional editors in our life. Like we've we've worked on writing, um, and so everything we saw, we're like, oh, that's good, but oh, that's not us. Mm. But that's okay. Like I need an example in order to be inspired about how to build this. And so the Welcome Series was an example where we said, you know, it's going to take us a lot of time, but if we make it sound like us, it's going to be that much more powerful. Because then when families come and see us, then they hear our story. It sounds like us. Mm -hmm. The copy on our website sounds like us. Like everything is authentic to who we are. And for me, the lesson learned was there is no substitute for the hard work, because it's really hard work to write your own copy, particularly at the early stage, because those words are going to be your brand. They're going to be your mission. They're going to be, and I can take I mean, Acton Academy as part of a network. There's 138 Acton Academies around the world, but the one in Guatemala is a little different than the one in Austin, Texas, and the one in Kuala Lumpur, like Malaysia, and in DC. And everyone mm -hmm. should take what they give us in Austin and write their own copy to make it our own. And we did the same thing with Nita. And so I guess it was just our propensity as editors, but also our propensity of just, hey, that was really helpful, but let's make it our own. And that's true for every Montessori school. I think the beauty of Montessori is just how personalized it can be. Yeah. And, and so one point, I'm just going to hop on a soapbox for seven seconds, but one point I want to stress that I love that you brought up, David, is the fact that the needle content is great and it's there as a guiding light, but when you can take it and make your own, that's really synergistic. One plus one just became three. And, and I think that you're perfect examples of that. Yeah, and one thing I've learned from the Acton Network um, is share your stuff back into the community. Hey, this is what we do. It works for us. And if it's inspiration for you, terrific. So if you, you're, you're welcome to share with the Nido community our welcome series of inspiration, please don't use it word for word. But, <laughs> word for word. but, but if you want another inspiration, um, by all means, um, we're happy to, to share because um, everyone is a little different in their own market. That's so generous of you. Melissa just asked a question of you, David. She said, we're starting our email nurture and thought the same about the templates. Next week, we're meeting to customize them. Do you have any tips? Yeah, have ours. I, I'm happy to share the, um, Melissa, I'm happy to share our welcome series by email, or I can give it to the customer that he needs to share it with you. It's just in a Google Doc, so it's easily shareable. Yeah, we'll make it a downloadable link from this video. Is that acceptable? That's fine. And we'll add a little note saying, you know, this isn't this isn't meant to be copied word for word. Uh, making a note now. Oh, it's, it's got our story. It'd be weird if it was your story. Too. <laughs> <laughs> My five-year-old Madeline. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that's really funny. Uh, note made, act and nurture to video. So I have another question for you, David. This is going to be really annoying. This is the marker in me, okay? So we're about to get into Nito. Um, talk a new potential member out of working with us. What are the reasons someone shouldn't start with Nito? What, and, and, and let's get dirty laundry here. What are the worst things that we did, the biggest mistakes that happened, um, ways that you would have mitigated risks like Throw me under the bus as much as you're capable of, because I think that that might be my best sales pitch. Um, oof, if I were to say, don't do it, it was it would be because of the copy. Hmm. That's great. Because um, unless you're willing to put the work in to making it your own, you're like 
substituting somebody else's Montessori for your own. I'm, hmm. I'm, I'm making this argument perhaps a little um, stronger than I believe, but if I were trying to convince somebody, um, okay, if you're not going to write the copy and you're just going to take the welcome series wholesale and you're just going to take all the ads, it's not, it's not going to work for you. Um, you have to roll up your sleeves and do the work. And so if you're just looking for a off the shelf success plan, it's not that. So I guess it's more managing expectations. Um, and I would say, I just give you guys a hard time. Like some of the Google ad copy wasn't quite right. So like everything required just a little, we're like annoying editors, but like everything just needs to be tweaked. But that's okay because that's like working with somebody who's an intelligent partner. But but if I were to talk somebody out of it, unless you're willing to put in your own time and energy into it, it's not going to be successful, as successful. That's great feedback. At the highest level cost. Yeah. I, I really appreciate that, David. So it's not it's not a set it and forget it. It really it's a collaborative environment. Can't be. And yeah. It, and you wouldn't want it to I mean now now I'm telling you guys, but you wouldn't want it to be. <laughs> Like we're Washington D.C. How is that the same as Seattle or Arizona and our own competitive landscape? Like it has to be different. So that would that's be what we're finding. It. We have members all over the country now, and it's it's so exciting on one hand, but then on the other hand, it's really frustrating because at a certain point you think, okay, we're going to get the template right, and then you go and you open up a new geography, and you know everybody has slightly different programs and slightly different geo settings and and slightly different context. You know, you might be a brand new school. The school's been around for thirty years, and um, and those things each have their own unique challenges. New schools have it a lot better in certain instances because we get to start completely fresh. There's no penalization, historical context, working against anything. Um, so it's, it's just every school is so unique and we really do need the interaction from the heads of schools. Um, we've limped along without it for some of our members, but the people like you and Nicole that, that really dive in deep, those are our most successful campaigns. And I think you have, you're among our more successful cost per acquisition. Did I make that up? Do you remember the Nino? It's just because DC is more expensive, but we made You're it. very competitive. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Anyway, that was my marketer soapbox. How did I do? I sort of monopolized the conversation. Yeah. Um, so, David, I know, you know, we're running on about um, 40 minutes. Am I right on that? Yeah, we've got about I want to make sure that I don't take up. Yeah, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I also want to make sure that you've got, you know, you feel like you shared what you wanted to share um, and go from there. Is there anything that you wanted to talk about before I ask you more questions? Um, the one other tip I would say, um, which surprised us, is that low tech still works in the age of digital. <laughs> so we do carefully measure like cost per tour you know, is quality tour. That's what we're trying to get from Google. But the shocking thing for us is we've done everything. We did Metro ads, we did in the subway, we did, you know, tables at various parent events. And the number one most cost effective tour gatherer is signs. Mm. Eight and a half by 11 laminated signs with a picture of my daughter saying Acton Academy of Washington DC in Foggy Bottom in public parks and playgrounds near us. I can't tell you how many customers have come and said, I saw your signs. And the, they may have seen the digital ad on Google, but they saw our signs. Right. Because they're sitting around with a cup of coffee while their child plays and there's nothing else to do and it's staring at them in the face. And so it is like maybe, I mean, dollar fifty per laminated sign. And we play this little cat and mouse game because it's not really legal. to. <laughs> and so literally we just drive around like once every other week and like put up the signs and then they clip them down and we put them up again. It's like whack-a-mole um, and people see it. I mean, it's just astonishing how effective that has been for us in DC, right? Maybe public parks because aren't as big of a deal for families in other cities, but astonishing how low tech. I mean, it's just, it's just a laminated sign, but so effective. That's great. Just out of curiosity, have you ever tried like the Starbucks billboard or the billboard at like the community center? We, we've done all that. Yeah, that's, that's on our list. But okay. All the community centers don't like you to sell anything. So if it's a school advertisement, sometimes we'll take them down. Interesting. Yeah. yeah but... 
to 50. So that's yeah, and that great. goes along yeah. with your point about like, you know, modifying the content and making it your own. There's also a part, you know, where we run your Google ads, but there's there's that marketing piece of getting into the community that the school needs to do. And there's just no, no way that Nito can provide that. We can, we can position you, but ultimately you need to be the one to go out into the community and, um, yeah. and do that. And it's good to hear that it's really successful for you in doing that. That's awesome. David, I, I pulled up your most recent report. Would you mind if I shared your cost per conversion? Yeah, sure. That's fine. So we're tracking $81.76 now, and that's gone up a little bit. And I think it's gone up because it's a more competitive time. Um, but, but just to summarize that, it costs us 80 bucks to get someone into your school for a tour, which is expensive. We aim to be below 100. So you're actually, you're, you're, you've got some margin there. Um, but that means that when somebody comes in, you have to close every couple of them or that stops that stops being a viable formula. Can you tell me a little bit about your, your closing ratio and, and how you track that? Oof, uh, I wish we tracked it better. Uh, in fact, now that we've been through a season, um, it would be the time to go back and look at the data. But mm -hmm. I think there's two things that I've learned about tours. One, there's nothing more painful than a tour that you know isn't gonna be a fit within the first two minutes. Oh, it's excruciating. Now we have to go through this and it's so expensive and it wears us out. Now we're telling our story. We can barely get our energy into it. It's like we're showing the space to like, Ugh. yeah. And so anything I can do, anything I can do to have people self select out before they get here, if they're not going to be a fit, thank God we're saving all of ourselves a whole bunch of time. Mm. How do you self select out? Can you afford it? I know this is a hard one, but I want to share our tuition with them as soon as possible. If, if this is not going to be possible, like let's not go through the motions here and pretend like it's going to be an issue later. And so maybe we differ slightly from your all's recommendation, but we put our tuition everywhere we can just to let people know this is this is what it's going to be. Um, sorry, I just got up a little tangent there. Um, no, that's a great tangent though. Matt includes his tuition in the nurture. I think it's an email three. Yeah. So you schedule a, a tour, you get an immediate confirmation email, a totally. follow up about them. And then by the third email, it's like, hey, just FYI. Yeah. And if they self select out at that point, thank you. That's what he says. Thank Save you. them a bunch of time. Yeah, totally. Um, I would say like the issue we've been finding is that parents are at different stages of readiness for when to start. And so mm. um, we had a tour this morning and they're like, can we start tomorrow? Or we brought it well, last week. They brought their child in. They're going to start in like next week. So the sales cycle was two weeks. That's great. And you have your child in a class and revenue coming in. It's fantastic. But others are like coming in the six week hole. It puts deposits down forever. And so I think the hard thing for us is measuring like sales cycle because they're not going to put down a deposit, but they're here. They're in our. It's like not everyone is a quick sale. Right. for this next fall and so it's, we're, we're struggling with how to measure properly like ultimately closed sales because it could be a three-year time horizon does that, does, does that make sense no what a unique problem too I, I i spoke at the ami conference this weekend and i made fun of montessori parents i called them neurotic multiple times and every time i said it i got like this really crisp laugh out loud moment from the audience and it's because i think i i didn't even realize how closely i hit the nail on the head but I mean, for somebody to make like a three year preface in their research is to, I don't, I didn't shop for my house with that much timeline. Totally. You know, I mean, we had about 60 days. It's, it's unbelievable. Totally. Totally. And so I don't know what our close rate is going to be. Mm -hmm. Because if I had a family who came in with a five week old and they're on our list and they kind of hear about us, will they close two years from now? Maybe. I don't right. know. Right, so jury's out. That's helpful for me to know. I think it's helpful for our members to know too, because it's part of the nuance of digital marketing. It's not an, an ATM. You put a dollar in, you get two dollars out. You know, you put money in, you get a student out of it. It's just you had the opportunity to get in front of a mission appropriate parent, build a relationship, possibly nurture them, and sometimes they close, other times they don't. But you know, hopefully over time, it ends up being kind of a profitable ratio. Yeah, and we've heard this from families who come back and actually decide to send their children here. Like they go to these other schools, and they don't hear the story. Mm. they're like 
yeah, they kind of going through the motions. They've been around 25 years. They have some young person who's on the admissions team who's walking me through. They're not even parents. And I, I came to Acton and I remember how it felt. It felt like these are people like me. These are parents who care, <laughs> who built this school after five years of hard work for their child. Like that's what they remember two years from now. And they don't remember or the materials or the, I mean, it's, it's the whole feeling. So I'd rather leave them with that than anything. Particularly That's a sales cycle. great take home message too. I think for our members is tell your story. I'm going to push that. I don't push that nearly enough. I think I, I sort of speak to it as a platitude just because I know you're supposed to like, Hey, mission, vision values go over here and let's talk about the real stuff, but you're right. It's just so critically important. What else is there? What else is there? Yeah. Very well said. Uh, we're 60 seconds over time, but I have time. If you do, do you want to do just kind of a quick fire? What, what can we do better? What do you want to see Nito do next? What's on the horizon for you? I would love Nito to help us crack the code for elementary marketing. Okay. Noted. We started, we're actually having some success there, but I think you guys have just nailed it for monetary primary we're rocking, we're growing, we're like super happy with the way that's working. Like elementary is just another, another nut to crack. It really is. It's a whole different animal it, from a, not just a tactile perspective, like in the school, but from a search perspective, what we're finding is when you start going higher up in those programs, people search different. differently. Yeah, totally. But we're having some success. We had one Google search project based learning who came and they're enrolling their child next week. That's elementary, awesome. Eight year old. Great. That's how they found us. So great search term, but uh, I wouldn't have picked that project-based learning. Okay. That's the brilliance of Google is every time we get a conversion, everybody's like, wow, that came from left field. I had no idea that, you know, you're never, if you were to bet on all of your key phrases or all your ad copy up front, you're never right. I, I mean, I, the most I could do is just bet that I'd be wrong and then I'd be right. <laughs> So we'll work on that, David. Elementary marketing. Um, it's going to be hard. It is, but we're up to the task. We have a few elementary-based Montessori schools. Uh, Mission, Pari, up in, in San Francisco, She's her campaign's actually been very successful. Oh, okay. But I, th I think it's because of where she is. And um, she's the only Montessori elementary school available in her area. So we, we were able to kind of carve out a pocket. But she still has to, we still have to find a way to massage it. But I think we can crack this code. I'm, I'm excited about it. Yeah. And I think one of the challenges for us is the children need to have, it's, it's a harder fit for the child to transition into elementary. Mm -hmm. And so it's the challenge of what is a good tour. A good tour is a family who is in good shape, but the ones that are harder is we got a behavioral problem at another school and they're moving to our school to see if this is going to be the one that's going to fix it. Right. And it, we, we can't always serve those families, at least the way we're set up. And so it's kind of a harder, how do I let those kind of families self-select out? Yeah, I, I don't know the answer to that. I'm just bringing that problem. That's what we've seen. Like a harder, not every child is capable at 12, 10 or 12 years old to join a elementary program and succeed. I mean, I believe they are, but maybe we're just not capable of where we are to support that. Well, I think it's it's well stated. Matt, actually, I don't know if you know this, but in the very beginning, Matt didn't want to take on schools that had elementary programs or didn't want to market for elementary programs for that exact reason. He said, "It's he, I've done it before, been down that path. It's so much more difficult for all these reasons. And then over time, as we kind of massaged it, we, we began, we, we dipped our toe in. But every single school we work with that has an elementary program that they want to market gets the exact same preface. Oh, wow. It, Interesting. Well, I'm, I'm glad it's, as the naive first timers here, um, we're discovering the same thing. Yeah, well, it's, you know, it's nice because there's still, there's still a massive need in the market. And if we can crack that code, it's, you know, it's less for us and more for the kids, really. Oh, I mean, yeah, if we can yeah. really, yeah, can that's an important thing for us to do. Path of, you know, traditional education that's not going to serve the children because of college, like I'm worried about that. The elementary school, give me a break. <laughs> right. <laughs> David, thank you so much for being here. This has been awesome and a blast. Oh, Deneen, I'm sorry I interrupted you. Yeah, no, it would be interesting to have that conversation because there's so many schools that struggle with that, you know, and if you think about, you know, the admissions process for elementary programs and how to select 
large group families and what that looks like if you have them visit. And um, that would be a really great conversation to have um, for schools that have elementary programs because I guarantee everyone is experiencing the same thing, the same struggles. Yeah, so absolutely. That's, that's all I wanted to say. <laughs> that was awesome. David, thank you. This has been fantastic. This Very is going to go well. Thank you. Thanks for all your help. Yeah, we'll shoot you an email once this is posted on our site. To all of our, our live participants, uh, let me give some shout outs. Christy, Melissa, Beth, thank you for being here. Thanks for your questions. Thanks for your participation. If you want to join us live, you can always do that. It's every Thursday at 10.30 a.m. Pacific, 1.30 p.m. Eastern. Um, and yeah, we're going to have more awesome guest speakers just like David. And uh, so please stay tuned. Um, Deneen, thanks for your time, as always. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Thanks, y'all. Take care.